The set can come down dinner time and wait. It's a drop in Saturday afternoons. Oh, I know I'm being silly, Archie. I've got a perfectly good doctor's appointment a week on Wednesday, and I've got so many other things I should be doing today. Things that will stop you sitting up all night worrying? Uh, well, I've got the lady that I'm doing for you this morning. Then I've got my own clients this afternoon. So? A couple of ladies have hair that's a half inch too long for a week. It's hardly the end of the world. You don't know my clients. They can come back next week. You need to put your mind at rest. What's left of it? Oh! I still can't believe that I took this dress in. Cancel your clients. I'll come with you to the surgery. What? In case I forget what they tell me? In case you need a friend. Well, I'm going to do your lady this morning. She can hardly come back next week, can she? <laughs> That's more like it. Hey, uh, why don't I drive you there, eh? And uh, we can pick that up on the way. Oh, Archie, thank you. You know, that's so kind. You've been really, really kind. I won't forget it. At least I hope I won't. <laughs> Which one's the alarm key again? It's that one. Right now, Audrey said there's not many appointments in the book, but the phone numbers are next to her, and just tell everybody she's ill. Well, she'd better be and all. One of them appointments is mine. I look like I've been dragged through a hedge. Well, I'll do your hair for you tonight. You're not wasting your birthday running round after me. It's bad enough you have to spend half of it taking back your presents. You got the receipt? Oh, man, hurry up. I'm not spending all my birthday in a car. I mean, puns, honestly. Your dad once bought me a vacuum cleaner for Christmas, and I'm telling you, he was lucky it wasn't the first thing up it. Good vacuum, though. I must write that down. I'm having it. Oh, warm. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I know. No divorce talk on your birthday. I'll see you later. Bye, Joshua. Hey, Ash. Stop, stop. Someone's moving in next door. Like you say, you don't want to spend your birthday stuck in a car. Ash. Vic, speak to Eileen. Problem. Look, this is your last call, or I'm sending Steve out before he's ate his bacon butty, and we are not insured if he chews some punter's leg off. It's all yours. Where is he? Uh. You, um, you notice anything odd about him, Vic? Oh, how long have you got? No, I mean, seriously. Well, like what? Well, anything, recently. What, apart from playing the invisible man most of the time, why? No reason. You said you asked in here, you're lying. It was loads worse than we know it was lost. I never slept at all last night, and it's still so now. Oh, hang on. I know it's stupid, but uh, I'm actually hoping that it isn't that dress. You know, that there's another explanation. It's five. Oh, five twenty, please. Yeah. Just let me have a look at it. Oh. Can I see the ticket again? Is there something on it? Oh, no, that's the pattern, isn't it? Thought something might have spilled. Do you remember me? Um. Yeah? Oh, of course, I <laughs> You do? Was it me nan's 70th the other Sunday? You live in Poplar Court? No, no, the dress. Do you remember it was me? There were tons of people there. No, the dress. Did I bring the dress? I never wanted to go in the first place. Miss Seb Fontaine, because of that. Oh, <laughs> now, Mrs Roberts wants to know whether you remember her bringing this dress in to be clean. Me nan's going a bit funny and all. Thinks I'm me, ma'am. Yes, well, I'm not going a bit funny, thank you very much. It's a very simple question, dear. Did I bring the dress in? Listen to me, Archie. Oh, all right. I'm new here. Tell her. I've only started. Oh, just take the money, take the money. I don't want to be taught to like I'm mad. Especially by somebody who thinks it's sane to stick holes in parts of their body where holes should never be stuck. Come on. Right, Dad. Things are packed, will you? You're starting early. I say you're starting early. It's Maxine. She's going to be trooping up shops all morning. She didn't like a birthday present, so we took it back and swapped it for a frock. 
Well, it's why a surprise. Well, whatever did you get to in first place? Well, according to the mother-in-law, men get presents for themselves, and women get presents to do with the house, and it's not right. She'll be more personal. Personal? I'd be well chuffed with them plans. Long stick and right heavy bottoms. Well, what's that? Chopping board. Proper butcher's block is this. Oh, dear. You know, one double and two singles means a family, doesn't it? <laughs> or a couple not speaking and a rights by old dog. <laughs> well, I mean, haven't you got any, like, pictures or toys or stuff, you know? Well, these things are new. I told you, love, I know now it's about them. And nice though it is to look at you. Unless you want to give us hand, you can do a lot worse than shit yourself. Mum, come here. Now, I'm far too busy. I'm not here. Me and my paperwork's making ourselves scarce. I've got an advisor lined up in the Rovers. Have a lovely day. Well, what would she want for herself? Best thing I ever bought a woman with this silk camisole thing. I can't buy my daughter in law underwear. It's not proper. Doreen. Doreen, I've got you one in. Let's have a look at the paperwork then. Another one, Eileen? Oh, why not? Steve said not to hurry back. Mm. Very generous of him to share you with us. Oh, I like your new barmaid. <laughs> Nothing complicated about divorce. You just divide everything down the middle, right? Your solicitor gets half and you fight over the rest. What's with the uh, paperwork? D I V O R C E. Uh, well, the best way to avoid a divorce is not to marry him in the first place. Yeah. What's all this then? The petitioner, Dorian Althwaite, lawfully married to Derek Heavey, herein after referred to as the, the filthy, filthy adulterer. adulterer. It's only pencil. <laughs> it's not very constructive. Well, I've got to get my frustrations out somewhere. I can't talk about it at our Maxine's. Mm. It'd ruin her birthday. Hmm. Guess I'll be sat on the wall outside the chippy come 10 o'clock, trying not to ruin their romantic evening in. Look, why don't we discuss this over dinner tonight? Things always look easier over a bottle of wine. Dinner? <laughs> After my performance last time. I'm not bringing any clients. <laughs> well, yes then. Case adjourned. Pick up at 7.30. You got a new receipt book? Thought I did the accounts. It, well... Um, should be out. Thanks. Uh, you're all right. No. Uh, you know your client this morning. The, that was her daughter, wasn't it, that came to view the body? Oh, yes, yes. Mm. Well, I said I was sorry about her mother, and uh, she says, to be honest, it's a relief. What do you think she meant, a relief? Well. Perhaps she'd uh, suffered. No. No, I think she meant she were relieved for herself. Like a huge burden had been lifted. Audrey. I don't want to be a burden, Archie. Mrs. Roberts? Will you sit in with me, Archie? Oh, Hang on, pal. I'll, uh, I'll just answer this call, but I'll, I'll be right back. Why, what's Dev said? Look, mate, I used to have a bet myself in the past, eh? Somebody giving me a big bag of... The rent money! I paid that in! I know what I mean. So you think I'm lying? You think I've ripped you off? No, I'm not saying that. So what's all this about? OK. If you don't believe me, ring the bank. Look, Finn. No, go on, call them! Call them and tell them you don't trust your flaming business partner! All right. I'm sorry. I'll uh, get that. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And the question I asked you at the beginning? Tony Blair. I can't see any problems with your short-term memory at all, Mrs Roberts. Oh, well, how do you know? I mean, Tony Blair's been Prime Minister for years and anyone can count backwards from 100. <sighs> what about the other question, my address? Sorry? Well, you asked me another question at the start that you said you wanted me to answer at the end. My address. Oh, I did. Well, it seems your recent memory is rather better than mine. So? 
five Grasmere Drive, Oak Hill. But <laughs> these aren't the kind of things I'm forgetting. But you're functioning normally, apart from these moments, as you call them. It's like things are just cut clean out of my head, you know? I mean, like, nothing's left behind. I mean, I, I don't even get the feeling that I've forgotten anything. It's just nothing, nothing. Well, look, as a precaution, I'm going to refer you to someone with far more experience in these concerns than I have. And in the meantime, I'll prescribe something to help you sleep. It's Alzheimer's, isn't it? I really don't think so. You're showing no classic symptoms of short-term memory loss at all, Mrs. Roberts. Look, I'll go and get some leaflets. They'll help you understand why I'm saying this. But I'm sure the psychiatrist will reassure you better. There. She's not worried. She's just trying not to frighten me. I mean, why else would she be sending me to a psychiatrist? It's happening, Archer. I'm gonna go mad. <laughs> Is talking to you like oh, that. No, I wasn't on my own. Archie was with me. Oh, right. Anyway, you've got enough on your plate. Poor little Sarah needs. Poor little Sarah's had us running backwards and forwards. Videos, magazines, top up for a mobile. Oh. She's even had Richard take the video recorder up <laughs> to her bedroom. <laughs> How long did the doctor say it would be, you know, before you see the psychiatrist? Oh. Well, you know, I mean, it's going to take a week for the letters to go to and fro, and then another couple of weeks to fit me in. Three weeks? Yeah, but don't worry. Now, look, I'm fine. Yes, of course you will. Now, Archie's got a stiff drink waiting for me over at the Rovers. Do you want me to come with you? Gail, the day I can't cross a couple of cobbles in search of a G and T, that's when you should have me put down. <laughs> See you later. Ooh, Richard. Oh, don't. <sighs> Three weeks waiting to know if there's something seriously wrong. Yeah. It's going to seem like a life sentence. Well, it's our job to take her mind off it. We'll keep an eye on her, OK? OK. What about a nice blouse? My daughter says a girl can't have too many tops. You know her size? Size? If you ask, they lie. The number of tops I bought Eve to her specifications and that she couldn't do up the front. It's a precaution. That's what the doctor said. Well, you'll have another, won't you? Oh, well, why not kill off a few more brain cells while I've still got them before they lock me away somewhere for my own good? Hey, now, that's enough for that. If they lock folk away for the first sign of any odd behaviour, then this place will be deserted. <laughs> and I'll tell you that for now. Uh, same again, love, please. Right, home. It's no good pretending, though, Rita. I mean, it happens to folk. You know above everybody how it happens. What's that that happens, then? Oh, old fools like me go to lolly. Rubbish. Do Lally, all folks like us, we trundle on forever. Well, I hope the psychiatrist thinks the same way as you do. Psychiatrist? Whatever's she talking about? Oh, I'm just having a few difficulties, Fred, you know, doing daft things. Well, all of us do daft things. Hear her out, Fred. Are you encouraging this talk? I'm surprised at you. Fred, when I met Anthony's wife, I was shocked at what Alzheimer's could do. Alzheimer's? I, yes, I'll see you later, right? I, I didn't mean you, love. No, 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 Audrey. I'm just going to see you. Yeah. Now, you stay. You stay. I meant it made me stop and think about all the little things that I keep forgetting. That's all. And now we've upset her. We didn't. Sanita said I could wait for you. Very trusting of her, wasn't it? You know, you want to be careful. Things lying around. Vic, what do you want? Well, don't you like people poking around in your business? Me neither. I'm sorry? Steve. Oh, right. Now, why would I go behind my own cousin's back to talk to his business partner? Mm, because you can't help stop yourself. you before you get in over your head. Now, if McDonald's aware of the truth, he can protect himself and therefore protect you. <coughs> yeah, right. Listen, you came to me for money twice. So my guess is you were desperate, but now you stopped asking. Right? So who bailed you out? Where are you getting your money from? You stay. 
stay out of my business. Vic, listen to me. When Alma was going, you know, dying, I mean, it was wrong. It was awful. And yes, when I think about it, it was, it was terrible. But at least she never stopped being Alma, did she? You know? She knew who she was right to the end, and she knew we loved her. Mom. I mean, at least she left the world knowing that, Gail. You're not dying. Yes, I know. You're but... not. Something oh. happened? Just some chatter in the room. Yes. They don't mean to upset me. Uh, anything I can do? No, no, you, you go on. I know you've got clients to see. Go on. OK. Yeah, you get off, love. That says, uh... Sarah stuff. Oh. He's a really sensitive man, isn't he? You hang on to him, sweetheart. A lot of women would die for a man like that. Good? Mmm. Mm, I thought it'd be chewier. Derek always insisted we both had our steaks well done. Ah, well, that's how it is with steak. The longer you cook it, the tougher it gets. Not unlike Derek, then. <laughs> if you say so. When you got married, did you think, this is it now? I'm with this one person forever? Every time. Oh. Look, you're an attractive woman. You'll find someone when the time's right. And no doubt he'll be messing some other woman about. It's like musical chairs these days. People should stick with the chair they've been sat on. Not go around soiling other people's. Yeah, but you wouldn't go back to your old one, would you? Derek? Hey, did you get a wedding list second time around? Oh, yeah, that'd go down well, wouldn't it? I'd better marry a different one each time, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, you could ask for an updated version of what they got you last time, you know, like um, a PlayStation instead of one of them, what's it, you know, tennis games that you used to play mm -hmm. on the TV. Uh, the White uh, Lines okay. is back. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Atari. Happy days, you can keep your Lara Croft. You know, the only time I tried her, she jumped twice at the face of this cliff and had her head eaten by bats. <laughs> Donald. <laughs> Word? <sighs> Not going to tell me how to run my business relations, eh? Have you done him anything? Is this some kind of family feud I don't know about? Eh? Look, the only feud between Vic and his bank balance. Mm -hmm. I've seen him. He's strung out about something. I don't want things getting any worse. So if you're not watching your back right now, I have to say you're being naive. Oh, naive now, is it? Uh, maybe I'm wrong. But if I had any investment in him right now, I'd be watching it very carefully. For his own. Right, that's me away. I'll go and see if Sally and Rita's left me any tea bags. See you, see you. See you mate. Is there anything I should know? About what? Thought not. Yeah. Oh, but we'll go, Dutch. Well, you can do what you like, but I'm getting this. <laughs> Oh, well, it's been lovely. I hadn't realised how much I'd missed one-to-one -one conversation with a man. Well, either my aftershave's turned that woman on, or she knows you. Where? Over there. Oh! That's Edith Moran. Next door but one to mine. Er, uh, to Derek's. Just... Run's neighbourhood watch. Can't leave your house without her nets twitching. But where was she when my petunias walked off in the night? <laughs> uh, keep the change. Right, we can get the last one in at the Rovers. Yeah, come on. Oh, it's lovely, thanks. It's personal, you see. And it's one size fits all, so you're all right there. I was thinking of having your name printed on back, but then I thought it might be a bit, you know, tasteless. Oh, Richard. How is Audrey? Is she not here? No. I was going to run her home, make sure she got back OK. I think I've upset her. Oh, everything's upsetting her at the moment, Rita. It's probably to do with this... whatever it is that's happening with her. There might be now it's happening, though. That's the trouble. And until she goes to the specialist and gets it down in black and white, I worry about her. She looks so vulnerable. I know, I know. Listen, I'd best get back, uh, see if she's with Gail. Well, be sure to tell her how sorry I am, won't you? I will. Bye. Hey, that's 
new, isn't it? I've always wanted one of them. <laughs> oh, you don't, know, Yes, I do. Oh, we just made it. Where have you been? Out with my bowler. You sticking the wine or do you want something else? Uh, best stick to wine. Don't want to mix. Give a good divorce advice, then. Same advice I give anybody on anything. Think ahead, watch your back, and never forget that your best friend can become your worst enemy in an instant. Nice. Sensitive. It was perfectly innocent. Mike Baldwin doesn't know the meaning of the innocent. Neither does your father. Yeah, I still think he'd be mortified if he knew. What are you? Neighbourhood watch? How would he find out? <gasps> oh. Glad to hear the meetings went well today. And how did my video selection go? Well, it all went quiet during Shrek, so they were either glued to it or fell asleep. <laughs> a bit of triumph over adversity, that's what I like. And soon our financial adversities will be well and truly triumphed. Over. Well, it's nice to hear a bit of optimism. Not optimism, Gail. Realism. Well, it sounds like optimism when you spent all afternoon trying to persuade your mother she's not at death's door. Successfully. It's not knowing that's the hardest. I don't know whether to prepare her for the worst or tell her she's been ridiculous. Well, it can't protect her from herself, love. Anyway, she's not here and I'm more concerned about you. It's hard for you too. Oh, don't worry about me. I've been looking after me. In fact, I've been positively selfish. Good. I've persuaded her to book a private appointment. She's seen a specialist on Tuesday. Tuesday? I can't let her stay in this state for three weeks. Anything could happen. I thought you'd decide... We can't hang around waiting to know. We have to move things on. Get it over with. So, here's to things being settled. One way or the other, by Tuesday. By Tuesday? <laughs>